All right, everyone, welcome along. So we've convinced you, haven't we, that a single pane of glass is the way to go because it brings everything together into one area. You're sharing one link with your senior leadership team, one link with your operational teams. This is where we need to go to get access to data. We're not pushing lots of locations, lots of different access points. It all comes from one place. The challenge with this, and this is where, oh, this is where it all breaks down, kind of in everyone's land, is Excel. Now, Excel is a core tool to every business that we've worked with, right? I've never been able to get rid of Excel. It's never really been something that I've tried to do. What we do find, though, is that we get a big benefit when we actually start to use Excel with the proper data sets as opposed to trying to manage Excel separately. What do I mean by that? So in a traditional environment, what will happen is I will download data, I'll then open up Excel, build some pivot tables, build some charts, write some measures, maybe have some pivot tables based off pivot tables or the like, okay? All the fun things that I've seen around. And then at the end, I've got a lovely number, some charts that I can produce for my leadership team. Brilliant. Until I have to redo it every week. Okay, when suddenly I'm spending hours of my time doing the same stuff. So how does Power BI and this single pane of glass affect all that? Well, the reality is Excel can connect to that single pane of glass reporting plane that we've built. Okay, so we've built that plane where we've curated and standardized our metrics, standardized our data set, standardized as much as possible about what we're doing with our data to then make it possible that it can be reused even in Excel. Now, you know, well, that's not going to work for me because I do. Well, if you're doing different business logic to everyone else, that's an issue. And that's something that we need to understand and surface up. So by challenging people to start to use the enterprise sources, what you uncover is those differences where in this department, business logic is applied slightly differently, but nobody knew. So, always wondered why Steve's numbers were slightly better than everyone else's, didn't you? Now you know. The truth is, though, that because you're doing that, those sessions, those workshops that a data team or that a data project will hold that haven't captured everything, largely because you haven't invited everyone to it, start to then uncover different areas within the business where logic is applied differently or even where there's a finance department that's producing the core central number that no one actually thought to validate that actually what they're doing. Once you start to do this though, it changes everything. The other added benefit is that more and more stuff comes from that core centralized report. The more stuff, data, reports, charts, analytics, press releases, statements that are being used from that central source the more valuable that is and the more value as a business you are going to get out of having that center of excellence managing that core data source yeah or that core semantic model that's drawing from all the data sources around the business so let's cut on over let's have a look in excel and see what it looks like to start to actually bring these things in and is it something that we could really live with if we had to <music> So here I am, my Excel spreadsheet. Like so many of you would sit in there going, oh, well, I'm just going to pull my data in here now. So I'll go, I'll download it from the spreadsheet, or, sorry, I'll download the spreadsheet from the database application or from the ERP solution we've got from whatever it is where you download the spreadsheet and then you can copy it somewhere and then I'll copy and paste it into the Excel spreadsheet and then I've got a pivot table. But don't worry, I've already set it all up. So all I have to do is paste the latest version into the table and then make sure that there's any, no new, no old rows are under the table and then it'll all work fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now this is what we do. So in Excel, we're gonna go to the data tab and under data, we can choose to get data. 
from the Power Platform, and it's already telling me, hey, you know, Power BI is available. Okay, we're going to get it from Power BI. I'm going to select Power BI. It will open up on the right hand side a list of Power BI models that I have access to. Okay, so me as a developer, I'll have access to a lot more, but for you as a consumer, these will be just the models that you have access to that you need. Okay, the beautiful thing is you can insert a pivot table. Okay? Microsoft have added this insert table. I'm less a fan of insert table, and there are issues with it, and there are all sorts of problems with it. I really don't like it, is my personal view. Okay, but I understand why it's there, but I don't like it. But what we find is we can insert a pivot table. Okay, so I'm going to go and insert a pivot table from my bikes ag, okay, which is the aggregation model that I've built. And again, I could have put descriptive information in there, more stuff around there. If you choose to um, flag, promote, or you know, certify data sets, they appear at the top of that list. Okay, but what I've got now is I've got access to in the right hand side. On the right hand side, you can see I've got all the measures that, that we've written for it, okay? And I've got all the tables that are available, okay? The limitation that you have here is that you can't write new measures, okay? You can't produce new content and use that within the model. You're kind of stuck with what you've got and you can't do any dynamic measures either. So you couldn't take a thing and use a sum against it. It has to already be in the model. That's the caveat that you've got with it. But that aside, okay, I'm now connected to a model in Excel that is, I think it's around 10 gig in total size across here, which bear in mind is amazing. We've got all the data connected, but we're using aggregation tables, we're using other stuff to make sure that we've got access to it across the piece. So we've got our connected Excel spreadsheet. And what we need to do now is really start to build content with it. So what I want to look at is bike hires. So I'm going to pick bike hires, put it in the values, and we'll see. It goes away and it comes back and says we've had 144 million rows of data in here. Okay, I could turn around and say, well, I want to see that by month and year. So we could put in, tell you what, let's go, let's do it this way. Let's go month. Okay, and then let's put year as the columns. Okay, actually, let's do month and name, shall we? I mean, you know, this is difficult as a building this. I mean, it's challenging, isn't it, that we've got this and we've suddenly built a chart showing us month years across there. But what we really want to know is actually what's going on by borough, don't we? So how about we do this? Let's pick to insert, insert a slicer against this. We're going to insert the slicer for area okay so now we can say well actually what's happened if we look at manhattan and we get it filters it down to just manhattan we can look and see well, what happened in the bronx brooklyn okay and i'm not having to do a lot of work with this i've been able to connect to the power bi data source i've been able to have everything there the measure is written okay it's there for me if there's a measure i need that's where we feed it back into the into our center of excellence. Oh, we really would need to have something about this. Okay, but we've got the ability to build them. And then because we've got this, we can choose to insert a chart, can't we? So we can go to pivot table design, insert a pivot chart. Okay, so we've got our lovely chart showing us really what's happening. And we can see 2024 is already doing far better than previous years. Okay, didn't take long. We've started to get this. We can get the insights very quickly and easily. You know, somebody could be saying, oh, well, that's just in Brooklyn. What's about overall? So we can clear the filter. We can do this. We could choose to say, well, we want to see this, but where it's just for uh, by area. So we're actually looking at year over year by area as opposed to by month. We can, all of those options are there for you with Excel connected to Power BI. We could also go and say, well, what we want to do is insert, or get, sorry, get some, let's go back to data. Let's go get data. 
from Power BI. Let's choose to insert a pivot table, this time from our yellow taxi data set. Okay, and it's going to be added to a new sheet. So it will set up a new sheet. We can connect that. We can bring in more data from a different data source. Okay. So we could say, well, let's bring in journeys, month name, year. Okay. I love the way that the New York Taxi data set is just so with all the weird dates and stuff, the different taxi computers are great for it. Like there's some real rogue data in there. But what we've got though, is we've got the ability to do all sorts with this because we could choose to clean this up. We could say, well, we want to year drift. We've got the filter now for that. So we want to make sure year drift is select multiple items. So year drift is kind of where select none of them. So how many years from the current year is what we're saying. Okay, so we pick zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've actually now got something pulled together. Okay, we've got that quickly and easily built. Again, we could choose to go pivot table analysis. We can choose to insert our pivot table, our slicer, sorry. We could come down to location. We've got borough, so we're going to pick up, isn't it, PU location, pick borough. Okay, so that start location saves what we've done with the bikes and starting location for it. And we could then choose to say, well, we're going to look at this for Brooklyn or for Manhattan or for the Bronx. Okay. So what we say, Manhattan. Okay, and it'll go away and it'll work it out and it'll come back. Don't forget the taxi data set haven't written an aggregation model for it. That's why it's slower. So you've got this ability suddenly to do that. And in terms of then saying, well, how do I compare these two pivot tables? Well, if you're an expert in Excel, comparing two pivot tables, it's comparing two pivot tables, not difficult. It becomes really easy to then start to draw your data together because the initial aggregation has all been done in your Power BI data set. So your semantic models that you have in your business, and in our example, we're using three. And I know I tell my clients and always push everyone and say, look, aim for one, okay? The goal and the objective for your business is to have one semantic model. We don't get too concerned if like this, we end up with three, but the goal would be to have one. If we could work out the best solution to pull all these together, I would say, let's do it. Okay, we could go down the data lake house, house route, push everything into one. Okay, potentially there's a value add from doing it. Potentially there isn't. In the case of this, I want to be able to compare direct query with pro, which is what the taxi data set is with the other stuff that we've got. That was the goal of this. That's why we've still kept them as three. But it's easy enough to bring these together and to do something in Excel so that oh, we're not having to do everything in Power BI or do this or do that or suddenly make sure everyone has to learn these new skills. They can do it in the platform that they like. And we as a business have the confidence that they're using our enterprise supported, managed and curated solution. So if their numbers are coming out differently to everyone else's, we know there's something funky going on. You know, have they applied a filter that we wouldn't normally expect them to apply? Is there an issue, like we know with the taxi data set, where there's just these outliers in them, and there's just, they're small numbers. You know, you're looking, there's 50, maybe 100 journeys that are outside of normal. It, it's kind of, it's, it's a small thing when you're saying, even, you know, even if it was a couple of thousand, when you've got, you know, 200 million rows of data. So we've got something that's really useful and easy to do and easy to access. So when your people are saying, oh, we're going to bring in Power BI, don't panic. You go, oh, I've got to learn all these new skills from me. Okay. Getting Power BI in, in place and embracing the future of it often comes from being able to just connect an Excel spreadsheet to it. Okay. So you're definitely doing and fighting the good fight if that's what you do. Just quickly, though, I'm going to show you what insert table does. Right, so I'm going to pick a new one. We'll choose to insert the table. 
Okay, it gives you this option of creating a table. The challenge that you have with it is it's not easy to edit after the fact. So if you build a table like this, you'll struggle with it, okay? Because invariably you'll need to change it. So we can choose, say, bike hires, by area, by month year, okay? That's the sort of thing we can imagine being asked to do, okay? Simple enough to do, go in the build, we can reorder it in terms of, let's put that first, that there, and there we go, okay? We can choose to then insert the table. The challenge I have with this is that that data is now in my Excel spreadsheet, okay? The data's there. So if you go into real granular levels and everything, potentially that spreadsheet becomes a real risk within your business. It's something I'm not a, not a fan of, okay? We want to re prevent data existing all, all over the place. Here with this, the data that is in is what's in the pivot table, okay? It's a lot less, the, the, the raw data is not there. So it's far better already than having, I've imported everything into Excel, it's now there. That spreadsheet becomes a real risk to, the, to your business. You know, this could be our revenue figures. It's less of an issue if it's a high level. You know, this potentially is more what you'd be willing to give out to the account, to um, the government as, you, as your tax records, your, your public records. So it's a pain, but it's not the worst. But it's a nice security feature. You do have Windows rights management. So you can see at the moment this has no label. Obviously, if we go down the route and start labeling them, then you can lock it down so that only people within your organization can access it, you know, all sorts of things like that, okay? But it's important to be aware of. This is kind of what you need in terms of this pivot table. This is the data that we need to produce. This is what we have to have versus I want a table that just extracts everything, which is a bit of a <gasps> panic in terms of what people can do with it. So what do you reckon then? Now, being able to do everything in Excel changes a lot of perception. The initial view for a lot of people and a lot of clients that I speak to is that, well, we want to get rid of Excel. Excel is definitely something we want to get rid of. We don't, we don't see the point of Excel. Okay? And I've had many conversations with senior leadership teams along those lines. Interestingly and invariably, what happens is exactly the argument that's always happened what drove Power BI to be the force it is, which was clients would go, they would spend significant sums of money implementing and building a new data solution within their, custom, within their business. Okay, and invariably, the lovely consultant would be just leaving, hand on the door, okay, and so the first person is extracting that data and putting it into an Excel spreadsheet to produce a new report requirement or a new number or a new report that's been requested by management that wasn't within the scope or the build of the first thing, okay? That's the reality, that's what happens, okay? That's what happens to every client I've ever worked at, either being on the consultancy side of the fence like I am now or the internal side of the fence. This is what your data, center of excellence, delivers to your business. Because these people are experts in data, they will bring through everything that you need. They will manage, they will maintain, and they will build those semantic models that you need. Now, it doesn't need to be an external resource that's driving all of that. Certainly at the early stages, I suspect for many clients, they would need external support and external guidance. But what you can also see is that if we don't do that, you run the risk of everyone looking to rebuild and rede redevelop, redesign data constantly. And the benefits that we get come when everyone is using the same data, the same sources, and there is no variation. Everyone has that single source of truth. And that's the phrase you hear a lot, isn't it? Single source of truth. And that comes from having a data plane that actually controls the access to data for everything. And it means that if you're producing content and it hasn't come from that data plane, you have some questions to answer. 
So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you now start to see, right, I get what he's going on about. I see the whole point, okay? As always, we're a consultancy. So get in touch, office at geordieconsulting.co.uk. We'd love to help and support and drive your business to success. Let us know as well. Do you agree with me? Is there a place for Excel in the modern world? Should Excel carry on the way it's going? And we, is that insert table kind of the worst part of the whole Excel and Power BI experience in the world ever, says me, or not? Okay. For now, though, stay safe, take care. Ta-da. <laughs>